Congress approved new airline legislation this week that reauthorizes the Federal Aviation Administration for the next five years. Julie Watts breaks down how this legislation impacts passengers and your rights when traveling. Thanks, guys. Joining me today to talk more about the legislation, what it includes and what it doesn't include is Joe Rideout from Consumer Action. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me on. You're a little concerned by the legislation. Yeah, it was really disappointing overall because we've got $82 billion in extra fees passengers are paying every year, mm -hmm. and it doesn't do anything to address things like seat selection fees, bag fees, which seem to be escalating more and more, uh, and passengers can do very little about it. It really just puts some window dressing on things that airlines were already forbidding in the first place, but doesn't do much to advance passenger rights. All right, let's talk about what some of those new rules are. It does ban in-flight cell phone calls, which were already banned, correct? Right. Uh, it bans dogs in the overhead, which, you know, we def recently had that high-profile right. incident where a dog died because they put it in the overhead. Uh, and it bans forcibly removing bumped passengers who were already seated. That, again, another issue ripped from the headlines mm -hmm. uh, when a United passenger was dragged off a plane because he was bumped. And it also authorizes or I guess that's a one-year time limit to study a safe minimum distance between seats. This really addresses the shrinking seat issue, right? It seems to, although I'm sure when the study is done it will do nothing to say that the seats need to be bigger than the smallest seat on any existing airline has right now. It'll really just uh, put a rubber stamp on the status quo at so best. So you're not anticipating more leg room is what you're saying? I'm sorry, I okay. don't think it would. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of folks also wonder what about uh, compensation for delayed and canceled flights? Does this address delays or cancellations? Yeah, interestingly enough, uh, you know, airlines have to tell you when your flight is delayed by 30 minutes or more. Mm -hmm. But there are no federal laws in place that mandate compensation if you are delayed or canceled for your flight. Uh, this all comes down to the airline policies. Um, usually an airline will give you meal vouchers or a hotel voucher depending on how long you're canceled or if it's an overnight delay. Uh, but it really comes down to what their policy is and they are not required to offer either of those things. It really will be your prerogative to, to ask them because the squeaky wheel will get the grease in these cases. So when it comes to delays, there's no federal requirements, but there is a three hour limit on the tarmac for domestic flights, right? And then they have to give you food and water after two hours? That's right. So that's also in response to a very publicized annoyance that happened on, on a flight from a couple of years ago. The delays are one thing, but then when your flight is canceled, as in we're done, we're not going to fly at all, uh, there's no requirement to compensate. You can ask, however, for a full refund, but one thing that yep. surprises people, they don't have to put you up in a hotel. No, they don't, unfortunately. It usually is something that they will do if you're canceled uh, for an overnight stay, but they don't have to actually provide a hotel, and some won't, although most of them will, but it's really up to you to ask. One thing you can do to avoid that is try to plan uh, an earlier flight if that's possible, or choose an airline that has multiple flights during the day and don't pick the last one. That'll maximize the chance that you can eventually get to your destination. And then getting bumped, you are entitled to compensation if you're bumped, right? If they overbook the flight, they bump you off. And there's some catches, some nuances with how to get that money. So my understanding is you've got 30 days to negotiate for more money after you've been bumped, and once you deposit the check, that's it? That's right, yeah. It's certainly legal to overbook, and airlines do it. If you're bumped involuntarily, then there are rules about exactly how much money you are entitled to. Really, the involuntary bump is very rare at this point. And you know, last question, bag fees. I know this is something that really bothers you. Many airlines are increasing bag fees, and it all seems to come at the same time in similar amounts. Yeah, to me, it really looks like collusion. When you have JetBlue at the end of August raising their bag fee by $5, and then United, Delta, and American following in suit in the, uh, the forthcoming days and making their bag fee exactly $30. That really looks like price fixing and collusion, but unfortunately we don't have a Department of Transportation that's looking out for passengers as much as it should be. Right. Well, some good tips here, though, on what to do if you are bumped, delayed, and a few new rules in effect. Thanks so much for joining us today, Joe. I appreciate it. Thanks.